Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the Watch Orokix Designer Interview Series featuring Generator Studios. But before we get started, if you want more professional designer interviews like these, as well as quick tips and tricks on how to build your brand to be a better designer and tutorials, please consider subscribing. Today I'm really excited to bring you Rich Hunsinger, the mastermind behind Generator Studios. His amazing watch faces and absolutely stunning promo art made him one of my favorite designers really quick. So before uh, we get too far into this thing, let's go ahead and bring him on. Hey man, how you doing? Good buddy, how you been? Doing good. Awesome. Well, this has been a great interview. I really enjoyed it. Um, well, I'll catch you next time. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> uh, all right. I was just playing. <clears throat> so, uh, Rich, um, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm living currently in Pennsylvania, uh, born and raised in New York on Long Island. Oh, yeah. Nice. Pennsylvania, huh? You like it over there? Yeah, it's nice. Just We're as in the suburbs. Just as much lockdown as everywhere else in the world right now. You know what? It's just it's loosening up a little bit. Um but yeah, it's the same as everywhere else, man. It's rough. Oh, yeah. The world's gone crazy. It has. All right, man. Well, hey, um I'm really curious. What you what do you do for work outside of um, you know, outside of designing faces? Well, honestly, for the past like 10 years, I had been doing uh, strategy guides for video games, um, writing and illustrating the maps for video games like Call of Duty and Halo and Tomb Raider and stuff like that. I uh, guess I wrote, I wrote about 11 or 12, but I've illustrated about maybe 25, 23, 25, something like that. I've done like a thousand maps over a thousand maps for video games like like the overhead top down right. maps you know what I mean? um so we did that for my team and i did that for gosh over 10 years and then i stopped doing strategy guys just wasn't profitable for them anymore you know like brady games and prima games get the strategy guide for whatever no more hmm. so they don't do that anymore so we don't do that anymore but um uh, and we actually got to do some consulting on that for Modern Warfare 3 and uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. My team and I got to consult on that while we were out there. That was awesome. Um, now I'm, uh, we, we just, I just do uh, graphic design, basically, web design, um, logos, all that kind of stuff. And uh, currently writing a graphic novel, writing and illustrating graphic novel. So a little busy trying to juggle all the different things like doing yeah. watches and all these different jobs and then random jobs come in like a logo project and then throw a wrench in everything so yeah well i mean i've seen some of uh some other stuff that you were working on you had told me something a little bit about that graphic novel and you showed me like that picture that we're gonna use for the collection of this video which I don't have it for you guys yet. That's going to be a surprise. You're just going to have to check uh, that out. Be, but but it's yeah. pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie. That was a fun photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> so then how did you get into watch design, um, you know, after you're doing all that other stuff? Uh, honestly, um, I don't know where I saw it, but I came across the, the Gear 3 Frontier, the Samsung poking around online i was like wow they make round smart watches what like, unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> so i dug in took a look i said it's going on the list so uh my wife got me uh the gear frontier for uh for my birthday and i was like uh, first thing everybody else same thing how do i make my own so of course found facer and uh the rest is history i guess right on I got it's crazy. It's, that's everybody's story, man. Everybody's story. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit pretty much how it happened for me too. A friend of mine gave yeah. me one and she already made her own smartwatches on Facer and showed me that and I was like, Ooh, I can do that. It's crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> they do um, a fantastic job, man. They really have a fantastic platform. I mean, yeah. it's it's run well everybody's cool the tools are freaking awesome like the, the promotions like everything like it's i've been around and seen all kinds of different shit on the internet man and they're doing it right they yeah. got good people on board for sure 
Yeah, I got to agree with that one. I actually, the Samsung Gear S3 Frontier was, um, that's my daily wear too, so I feel That's the only one I got. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's, I think you're the first person I've talked to that does not have a whole bunch of them, but that's pretty legit. It's a good one. I have a bunch of watches. They're not expensive, not all of them anyway, but like, that's the only smart one I got. I've only gotten into this for like a year. I've only been doing this for about a year. Nice. Yeah, well, actually, for me... I have like I only have one mechanical watch and like six or seven smart ones. I'm like the opposite. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um so then what's your favorite style to design? I mean looking at some of your your um your promos and just like your watches in general, um I see a lot of analog and a lot of hybrids. You you like to swing one particular it's a lot way? of hybrids recently because I find that's what I like to wear and the jaeger series was kind of like all right what do i want what do i want in a watch i want everything i want in the one watch all the colors all the different things i want to turn the hands off i want to turn the outside part i want to turn all the stuff off or on or whatever kind of customize it how i want so i kind of like the hybrid thing um but I get really into whatever it is I decide I'm going to work on. Sometimes it's, it's all analog stuff like the Hunsinger collection, all analog stuff. I mean, there's a little bits of digital in there, but you know, just for smartwatch stuff, but I love doing that one. I also love doing the vapor series, which was all digital, totally opposite. So now I guess after having done all of those, I kind of like the hybrid, I guess the most. Right on. I mean, I, I think it's it's fun to just kind of try something new a lot of the times. Like, yeah, yeah. And then and then how can we push these three, you know, analog, digital, hybrid, push these to like the next level? So I get you, I get you. But uh, one thing that I am also, you know, the the one thing I always just want to jump straight into when it comes to talking with any other designer is like, what is your workflow look like? And it's right. absolutely like my favorite part of the conversation so um i'd like to just kind of sit back here and let you talk a little bit about your workflow um and how you get from point a to point b and while we're doing that i actually have um a little slideshow that's going to play in the background it is essentially um all of rich's uh promo art i mean i probably not all of them but a lot of his promo art that's going to kind of go sliding through so you can kind of see just how amazing his promo art is and how awesome his watches are while he talks about oh, thanks man yeah of course i mean they are they're great so here let's uh, go ahead and get started i'm just gonna let you take away and uh tell us about how you get from point a to point b yeah it's tough usually what i'll do is i'll come up with um i'll see something i'll come up with a concept once i finish whatever it was i was working on I'll come up with a concept and i mean i find inspiration everywhere like it could be a car. It could be, it could be a texture. It could be, it could be a color combination and it'll spawn something else in my brain. I said, I can combine that with this, turn that into that and then make a watch out of it. Um, <laughs> and then once I get that, once I get the idea for whatever it's going to be, like it could be something as stupid as simple as like, I want to do a set of military watches. It's how the Viking military ones came up. I just want to do a set of military watches. What do military guys want? Super easy to read. I just quick flash. What is it? Okay, cool. Analog stuff and digital stuff. All the information. So one tap, super easy to manage. One tap goes to digital, one tap back to analog. And that's it. But all the information you could want on it. So that was this the, the, the concept for that whole series. And I find that once I get into it, once I do the first one, all the rest of them are kind of variations of things I wanted to do with the first one, but I didn't because it looked good however I was doing it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So like how many times have you done something that you're like, ah, this this looks cool here, but it also looks cool here. I'm just going to leave it here. But then in the next one, you can put it over there, you know? So that's that's kind of how a lot of my pieces are. They're all kind of variations of what I wanted to do with the first one. 
sort of, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think uh, I get it. I mean, I'd have to say the best way I can describe my watch designing process is I get a very simple concept. I just go straight to, you know, designing it. I make it like the base model of what's in my head and I put it on right. my watch and then I let it, I just look at it every day. And, and even if it's just like one bezel and some hands and then right. it evolves from just kidding. Yep. More ideas, more ideas. I put them in, implement them, see which ones work and which ones don't work. So. It's so important to, to just sink it early. I know some people don't like to, I don't like to do that all the time, but to sink it early and see how big things are, see how bright things are, see how much room you really have to work with. You know, you should, you should always sink early, even if it's yeah. just like a picture, you know, like you could do, yeah. like I design everything in Photoshop. Um, I only recently figured out how to do text on a circle, like legit text <laughs> on a circle in Photoshop because I hated doing it in Illustrator. I hate Illustrator. Um, and it was a nightmare to do it. Um, so now I do everything in Photoshop, but um, I, I highly suggest taking just a JPEG of whatever you've designed, throw it into a watch, sync it, and see what it looks like. I've, I've thrown faces out. I've completely started over because I've synced it. And I was like, this, I can't read anything or this is way too horsey or whatever the case, you know? Yeah, no, I, for sure. I get it. So you do all your designing in Photoshop. Then you said you don't like Everything. illustrator. Hate it. So you're just like a hundred percent Photoshop. <laughs> Hate it. <laughs> I can't say I've ever actually used it for, for, or anything it has its place it's 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 great at what it does it's it just requires so many steps to do some of the things that you need to do that for a piece that's ultimately what is it 640 480 i mean it's a tiny piece that you don't really need something like that to do that unless it's the only thing that you know how to use and and you're really good at it um but the pace for me i can make way more mistakes and have way more successes in photoshop in way less time now maybe that's just because i'm better at it i'm sure nathan is way better at illustrator than i am <laughs> i've seen him rifling through all that stuff he's really good yeah uh, but um but i'm better in photoshop and i can i can make more mistakes and try different things more quickly in photoshop than i can in illustrator so it lets me explore a lot of different things before i actually come down on something you know yeah, for sure. But I mean, how long have you been photoshopping? Probably many, Boy, many years, like like 30 years, 30 years. Yeah. So, I mean, when you got 30 years of skill, no, like like 25 years, 25 okay. years. Let's okay. Say. Either way, if you have more than 10 years experience, chances are you're going to be able to fly through that program when you want to yeah. do something. So for sure. And I know you, you kind of talked a little bit about um, where you get your inspiration, but do you just, when you get inspiration, you know, say you wanted to do the military thing, you had an idea, did you just go straight to Photoshop, you know, like drawing on paper or like sketching? Like, how do you get that initial idea yeah. into? It's, it's, it's rare that I'll sketch in pencil for a face. I do it a lot. I used to do it a lot for website stuff just to see what it would look like. I, I can see a lot of stuff in my brain, but sometimes I just need to see how it's going to work out and just kind of move things around and erase it and move it around. But um, with faces, I maybe, let me see, how many faces do I have? 65 faces. Out of 65 faces, kicks maybe, I might have drawn one in pencil like halfway. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like down in the workshop and I was like, oh, I got an idea. Ah, sketch it out real quick so I don't forget. That was it. Nice. Uh, but most of the time, I'm just sitting around. I'll be working on something. I'll see something on TV. I'll remember something. I'll hear something. I'll see a color, uh, color combinations in a freaking magazine ad or something. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I can do that. Like, I know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I, I was watching a movie and somebody was wearing these two different colors. And I was like, I'm going to do a Mars series. Like, what? Just. That's where the Mars series came from. Those are awesome just, watches. Just two, just two colors. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, 
So when it comes to designing them, what do you think the hardest part of designing a watch face is? Well, designing it is, is comes fairly easy to me. Um, putting it together and making it go, that's a bit of a different story. Uh, I have no idea how most of the coding works. I hack my way through, I cut, I copy, I paste, I try different things, I see what it does, I edit, I revise, I see what it does, and then I call Mike O'Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, everybody's throwing Mike O'Day out there for I the, the coding master. He's such a good guy, man, I'll tell you what, fantastic. Well, I, I mean, so far, this is only episode two, but um, so far, I mean, both you and or you and Nathan have said coding is is the the struggle. So, you know, um, it's the the only other part about it that's difficult is the sizing of things. Like sizing and like brightness is tough too because you never know what what brightness level people are running their watches. You don't know how bright certain certain displays are just brighter than others. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like how bright do I make this? Do I let them just edit it? how is the lighting set so like all that stuff is difficult trying to how much do i pack in because i'm sure you get these these comments too where it's like can you add a whatever (laughs) can you take off the whatever can you make this do that and this part go up here and you know they try to redesign your stuff and um (laughs) it's funny man i love it i love i love it i love doing this kind of stuff and um thanks to goss actually who had kind of um helped me along through this whole process and uh kind of refine where i was going and what i was doing and show what i could do too you know because right. i was making a lot of stuff that i just wanted to have for myself um but you can't always make things that that you like because not everybody's gonna like what you like, but you also have to do what you like because otherwise it's gonna feel like work, you know? Right. So it's a tough, like, it's a tough balance. Uh, but Goss really helped me along in the beginning to, to, to make partner for sure. And I appreciate him for that. He's a good guy. Yeah. A fantastic designer, man. I mean, he, yeah. As a 3D king, you know, he's obviously the one I'm gunning for as far as, like, he he gives me so much drive and motivation to just improve my 3D skills because he's top dog in that that area, you know, when it comes to Dude, your to 3D that. stuff looks great, man. Great. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Really? The last I still got a waste. Said, man, looks fantastic. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, what, what uh, advice would you give to new designers? Because, I mean, I feel like that's like a good segue is talking about how you had to, you know, you got some yeah. help to move up. But what what do you, what can you like impart to other designers? Um, it, it's tough. It depends on what they want to do. If they want to make partner, they're going to have to do all kinds of different styles of stuff or do what they do really, really well. Um, and like I said, they ha- you, you, you're you gonna have to do stuff that you like. You have to enjoy what you're doing, otherwise it feels like work, you know? I mean, I used to landscape, but I actually liked it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't feel like work. <laughs> but I enjoyed like cutting beds and like planting stuff and sort of helping the boss design things, you know? So whatever it is that you do if you can like something about it it won't feel like work so do stuff that you like do stuff that you think people will like but you still like and always push like there's plenty of times where i haven't bothered to push myself because i just wanted to get something done but i knew if i pushed myself that it would have been something better and it would have been something different so definitely push yourself and try to learn stuff that you maybe don't know or don't think you want to know and try that but got to do stuff that you like right do stuff you like you'll enjoy it you'll have fun and then you'll be like oh it's 3 30 in the morning shit i gotta go to bed (laughs) (laughs) yeah that happens more often than you'd think probably most people would think 
But um, yeah, so, you know, kind of a, expanding on that a little bit, you know, when it comes to doing stuff that you like, you know, you'll find that if you like something, you'll find others like it too. So as long sure. as you're staying true to your style and your design and just and not being afraid to publish your work and what you love and what you're proud about, other people are going to like that too. You'll find your follow. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, it was funny. We were just talking in the uh, in the Slack channel. It was, I think, Mike O'Day came out and said he was talking about do you creating different brands basically because he was working on his logo. Um, and I didn't dig in there because I figured maybe we'd get into it today, or I was going to hit him up on the side. But with the way I do stuff, I have Generator Studios is myself as the business, I guess, the company. But everything I put out is in chunks of sub brands, sort of, just in yeah. case somebody doesn't like Generator Studios. You know what I mean? So let's say you come up here, you're like, oh, and everything's got a Generator Studios logo, and you're scrolling, you're like, nah, I don't, I don't like this guy's logo. I don't like these colors, whatever it is. That's not my style. So I kind of throw a bunch of different brands at it. And that's currently the mindset that I'm going at it with. I've, I've yet to actually do like a Vapor 2 or Vapor what Sport 2 or right. Collider, whatever. You know, I haven't done a second set of any of these yet because I keep coming up with different stuff. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like it, though. I mean, the way that you have your promo art, it, it does... It, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I do really like how each one has like its own kind of logo kind of thing. And it's, and then that's something that really kind of blows my mind because I, I never really had that mindset. But, um, when I try to think of like how I can do that and I'm like, I'm kind of terrible at logos, man. I, I don't even know. If, no. <laughs> it's like, I don't even don't know. Tell your sister that. <laughs> uh, it's like, I don't even know if mine is good uh, and I can't, really think of how i make it better so i mean i'm just gonna stick with that and see how it goes no, but it's good it's good i, I did... tell you if it sucks oh well thank you <laughs> <laughs> i did rebrand it though so that i can now good. it's just one solid color instead of a bunch of different colors and that way i can like change nice the color before. yeah but i mean i like you know if i have a green face and then it's like the red logo it's like all right. of a sudden it's like christmas but well you can tweak that yeah but you now now I've got it to where it's just a solid color, so I can change it to any solid color, and it and right. it's like the shape that matters. So it's perfect, kind of cool. And uh, yeah, man, if you guys are getting advice, um, if you guys are getting some value out of this great advice, definitely hit that like button so other people can find it. Um, and speaking of like other designers and and uh, what's some other designers that you love? Like, do you get inspiration from other like? partner designers oh, or man i i honestly i try not to um i'm always poking through the stuff just to see what people are doing but i honestly i i don't cruise through a bunch of watch sites i don't i don't subscribe to any like watch blogs or video stuff or anything like that because i don't want to i don't want to be influenced and subconsciously recreate shit that already exists that makes sense yeah i can uh, get that yeah so i try not to look at a lot of stuff but some people are doing some fantastic shit man. so <laughs> like i said goss does like the most ridiculous stuff and i mean his stuff is so clean even even when it gets so small it's so clean it's so good um but some other guys are like, you know, obviously you talk to Nathan. Nathan's stuff is what happens when a really good designer, graphic designer, picks up watch design, right? I mean, his stuff is super clean and super well spaced, designed, like choices. All the stuff that he does is years and years of graphic design experience. He's He's got a great look and a great feel for all his stuff too. Um, and other guys, obviously Mike O'Day, his coding stuff is, I mean, Mike knows, seems to know everything. Nobody seems to know anything about how to write code for this thing except Mike O'Day. I swear <laughs> to God. 
And his stuff is pretty brilliant too. I mean, he does like some of the most awesome aviator pilot watches that that, that are up on the site right now. Um, and uh, who's the who's the new guy? Mike. Um, the B sharp. No, 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 Mike. Mike. Mike O B. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, his stuff. Where he does the cool like offset. It's like a giant circle, but it's like offset a little oh, bit. And yeah. It's, like, Dude, he does some really interesting stuff. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad he made partner because uh, he's he does some really awesome stuff. Um, but there's so many cool different. There's so many different styles and and um, and looks out there like like um, like cyberpunk stuff. Like who's coming up with that stuff? Vader stuff. Who's coming up with all that stuff? I mean, the, some really cool stuff. And uh, you know, like Lin Lay paints all that stuff. Lin Lay designs. She like paints all that stuff. Like, yeah, that's that's nuts. It's fantastic, right? So like everybody's got so many cool different things, and I'm like, that's cool. Don't copy it. That's cool. Don't even remember it. That's cool. <laughs> don't do anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, well, speaking of, uh, when it comes to other designers, do you have a favorite face that's not yours? The, the one that Goss did, the, uh, here, the airlock. The airlock. The airlock. That was like the first one that I saw that, that had like some serious animation in it where all the, like, all the stuff comes in, <laughs> comes out and all the shit, like fantastic, right? Uh, all the blinking lights and everything. He's just he's just on a on a on a different level, and I love that he does it because he loves to do it. You know, I know how busy he is, uh, but I love that he loves doing it and makes some of the most awesome stuff. Man, I, I don't even think you you'd have to go back to work by the time you went through all of the Goss customizations on his watches. It's like it's like, dude, I I can't. I I've, I've been through. I don't. There's 2000 customizations <laughs> on his watches like, yes. <laughs> i know it's like you get like whenever you buy one of his watches it's not you're not buying a watch you're buying like 50 watches it's ridiculous it's so cool right so uh, i learned a lot i learned a lot by watching him and and but i but i pick and choose and take like different ideas and and concepts from different like everything not not watchmakers really but like everywhere that i see stuff even just textures sometimes, you know. But yeah, Goss, Goss does some crazy stuff. I love his stuff. Such a good guy. Right. And uh, speaking of, like, what is a, a favorite face of yours? Like, do you have a favorite face that you've created? <sighs> it's hard to pick a favorite. Um, but I, I did have a lot of fun making the Collider series. I like the... Um, the T thirty seven. Clicking on it now. T thirty seven, cause and if you click on the bottom half, it'll close everything up, turn it into a regular face. Top half will theme it. Um, and uh, I know B sharp would probably criticize my gears work here, <laughs> but my gear works. Sorry, uh, but. I know that when people get a smartwatch, it's it's they want something cool going on, right? So I was like, here's some cool shit going on. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right on. But you know, if you're at a meeting or whatever and you're like, shit, I can't look all crazy, you put your cool face on, you just close it up. Looks good. Right. <laughs> I like that one. Proportionally, it seemed to come out nice and the movement looked good to me when I finished it, there's so much tweaking that goes on. And in, right. in some of these things, I'm like, uh, plus two, plus three, plus four, no, minus one, minus two, like, it's too fast. It's too slow. This should be going this way. This should be going the other way. I mean, how many times do you sit there and make those changes? It takes all I night. Know. For real. <laughs> and then eventually you just gotta be like, I can nitpick this thing for the rest of my life. I just gotta uh -huh. get it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're like, this one's good. I'm going to do that in the next one right yep. all right man well um i guess uh another thing is 
something I didn't do in the last one, but do you have any questions for me? A little different. Oh, yeah, your blender stuff. Um, I used to do a lot of 3D stuff, but the program I used to use doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so, and I never took the time to get into another one, but mm -hmm. I know Blender's free. So what's your advice to somebody starting in Blender that wants to do this kind of stuff? Oh, um, okay. So where would you start? Blender, I, I can only really tell you my path. Um, where I started was a simple, just YouTube tutorials. Um, my recommendation is go to Blender Guru. Okay. Um, it's uh, on YouTube. He essentially taught me all the basics that I need to know about the program and how the 3D model. And then from there, um, it really was just a lot of practice. Um, I did, I watched all his tutorials and I didn't actually really create a whole lot of them. I just watched them um, and then tried to use the principles and the hotkeys and everything that he taught in a watch. Um, and that's how I started. I don't necessarily say you should go that route, but if I had time to model, I wanted it to be on a watch. So that way I could actually have something to publish. So right. I feel like if you got some extra time, just do the whole tutorial so that you can actually learn exactly yeah. how he goes about it. Um, but the biggest advice that I would have to say for Blender is um, be prepared in the beginning for a very, very steep learning curve. Yeah. And just, I that. and just know that if you, if this is what you want, if this is what you want your finished product to look like, um, then just know it's going to be a lot of work up front, but the back yeah. end, the back end is going to be well worth it and just don't quit. Cause that's going to be the hardest thing. Most people will, will go through and it, it'll be so much information just cause it's so in depth. And then yeah. they'll just kind of be like, okay, this is really hard and give up before it they is. get to the end. Um, it is. So just be prepared for that in the beginning and then just push through and, and don't give up on it. Um, but yeah, that's, no, that's, that's good advice. Best advice. I'll tell you what, you're, 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 you're right about it because like I said, I've done 3d stuff like fairly intensively back in the day, but I jumped in there and I was like, do I need to learn Chinese to do this? Like, <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, I mean, blender is free and it's ex incredibly <laughs> powerful. And I mean, yeah. everything from, you could do literally everything in there. You can yeah. do your, um, build your watches you can texture them you can layer them out you can do your promo yeah, like it renders it lights it models it does everything right? do like promo animations and you can even edit your promo videos you know in there because really? there's a nice. video editing it does software. animation in there too animation video editing okay. photo it's got like a compositor where you could do like um you know just your photos just like in photoshop it's really? not quite in depth as photoshop but you can like you know change your contrast and everything and and right. add like little special effects and light flares and stuff you can out add all that in in post and oh that's nice and there's so much more that i don't even know how to do like i can... mean dude i jumped in there and i was like okay look i know a little bit of 3d i can take care of these blender yeah and i jumped in there i was like all i want to do is like extrude a set of numbers right like just the clock face numbers, just extrude them a little bit. I figured I could figure that out. No freaking way. Dude, <laughs> I have no fucking idea how to do it. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> so I might be poking you to, Hey, show me some good tutorials on extrusions or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, you know, I mean, and that's ultimate that my ultimate goal for this, uh, this YouTube channel too, is to be able to teach people how to do what I do and, how to become partners like us and how to just grow and build a yeah. brand and actually, you know, make some income off of their faces. So, um, you know, I'm starting with the interviews, uh, just so I can kind of get my feet wet and learn a little more about editing and all that stuff. But, yeah. um, I'm also have a series of tutorials that I have lined up that I'm going to start recording here very shortly. Um, 
and uh, as well as like tips and tricks videos and all that stuff. So is one I... of them extrusions in Blender? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, the Blender I I feel like is gonna be in the back half, unfortunately, just because yeah, yeah. because uh, there's a lot extra. of yeah, there's a lot of steps to get there before, and I don't yeah. think that you know there's a whole lot of audience that is using blender to build faces right now so i will get there uh but it's going to be a little while but if you have any questions you know feel free to just hit me up anytime and i'll i'm gonna poke you yes yeah Thank for you. sure <laughs> <laughs> all right man well it's been great talking with you um yeah cheers yeah for real <laughs> Rich Hunsinger from Generator Studios. We get to see um, all of his beautiful work. And I'm not going to lie, I love your um, Viking series. That's, that's, I'm going to throw that out oh, there. That's, you, that's my favorite series. Ah, oh, thank you. So um, it actually inspired me to design a face recently. And uh, that one's coming out soon, too, actually. So keep an eye out for oh, that, that one. Oh, the one that you're, you just recently showed me? That one? Yeah. Yeah. The red with the really deep like bezel and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's the awesome. The deep bezels are my my thing, so I yeah, don't I don't super deep. It looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, so keep an eye out for that guys. Um but once again, if you guys found value in this video, please uh hit that like button so other people can find this and get this good information and all this great advice from uh these pro designers, but um, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to Rich here and get up on out of here. But thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I had a great time, and hopefully you did too. So, uh, Rich, I'll well, catch you later, man. Thanks, buddy. All right. Take care, dude. Once again, everybody, that was Rich Hunsinger from Generator Studios. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you in Episode 3, where we bring on Cyberpunk and hopefully get an answer to the question that I've been dying to know. How are you able to make every face in a way that when you see it, you just instantly know that it's his? If you enjoyed this uh, episode and you want more designer interviews as well as tutorials and quick tips and tricks on how to build your brand and be a better designer, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss episode three. Also, if you got value out of this video, uh, please hit that like button and consider sharing to help more people find this content. As always, take care. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.